Hello and good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you? Doing fantastic. Great. This is Ryan Jacobson calling for the podcast interview. Absolutely. Ryan, I'm spoiled because usually I get these little directors on. They're going, ah, Arrow, you've got uh, six minutes and uh, Ryan's going to be on here in a couple seconds. Oh, man, I, I'm, I'm blessed today just to have the, the, the direct energy. <laughs> oh, I'm not that fancy. <laughs> yeah, but you speak a language that I've studied my entire life, and that is is that choose your path. This is my mantra: is winning is a choice. We are on the same page. And the thing about it is, I love that you are willing to spread the language. Oh, absolutely! I love it. To be in that moment, something had to have happened in your life because you had to experience something for you to say, "You know what? If I felt this way, somebody else is going to as well." Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was totally a reluctant reader as a child. I, I did not like to read books at all um, until I think I was in fifth grade and my mom brought home my first Choose Your Path book. And it really changed reading for me. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it was like playing a game and it was a game that I wanted to win. And so it just it, it, it brought reading um, into my life and it just became something I wanted to do. And I read every Choose Your Path book I could find. Um, and that led me to reading, you know, more contemporary or more traditional, I guess, um, types of books, too. Yeah. So I became an avid reader because of Choose Your Path books. And, and look at the way that you interact the imagination with, with, with young adult readers as well as adult readers. And, and, and adult readers need to understand that this book right here, it, it's almost like a brain game. Can you survive the wonderful Wizard of Oz? Oh, my God, dude. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. It, it was a real challenge to to adapt that book. Um, it, it's it's um, it's such an interesting story. But, um, you know, it's both a blessing and a curse with this one is that it is such a familiar story. Everybody knows the story. So how are you going to create a choose your path type of book where the choices aren't obvious? Because if you know the story, making the choices is easy. So that was another layer of challenge with with this Choose Your Path book in particular, where we had to be a little bit trickier than normal with the choices we're presenting to the reader. Are, are parents reaching out to you in the way of saying, you taught my child how to make an everyday choice on choosing a path? Because, I mean, it, it, instead of wandering through life, it, it's like the, the young adult readers are going, no, no, give me direction, just give, and I need to find some way to find it. Yeah, you know, I haven't heard that specifically from parents. I do hear a lot of stories similar to my own where, um, you know, I'll get an email from parents after they've read one of the Choose Your Path books, and they'll say something to the effect of, my child won't put down your book, yeah. and now they want to read more books. And I, I'm so happy to be able to share my own personal experience with reading. Um, you know, to introduce that to another generation of readers. So that is that is probably more rewarding than anything else to me that um, I'm getting kids who aren't reading um, to become um, more avid readers. Does that put the pressure on you as a creative mind? And the reason why I bring that up is, is that, you know, everybody wants to be in radio, but can you do it six days a week? Can you do it for 30 days? Can you do it for, you know, 15 years? I mean, that's the same thing as an author or a writer is that, you know, a lot of people want to do it, but now the pressure's on you because kids do want the, your books. I guess I've never thought about it, but now I'm probably going to be paralyzed oh, God, no. if I try to write a book. <laughs> <laughs> you know, no, um, you know, I, I, I'm blessed with a great imagination. Um, I, I don't feel like I can shut my imagination off if I try. So, I mean, there are book ideas brewing in my mind all the time. And I guess I don't look at it big picture like that. Um, when I'm writing a book or when I'm choosing which book to work on next, I'm always thinking about the child me. Mm -hmm. Like, would I have liked this book? Is this a book that I would not have been able to put down? And if the answer is yes, then I keep going. And if the answer is no, uh, then I need to try something else. Yeah. So I guess I'm using myself as my target audience. And it, it really seems to be working because it's connecting with with a lot of middle grade readers. I had a strange uh, encounter this past weekend in the way that my sister wrote to me and said, you, you wrote this book in 2009? How come I didn't know? And I said, well, I, I don't want to brag about it. And, and but have you had any moments like that where people go, uh, Ryan, what, when did you release this book? <laughs> well, yeah, uh, you know, we're um, Midwest here. We don't like to brag about ourselves. Right. So we, we, we try to downplay everything like, oh, you're an author. Oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Anybody <laughs> can be an author. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Whatever. 
Um, yeah, I, I have books that even I forgot I've written. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I, I don't even know what the exact count is, but it, it, you know, it's somewhere in the ballpark of 60 or 70 books wow. in, in total. Um, yeah, so my mom tries to get a copy of every book that I do. I don't think she has them all either. <laughs> So one thing that really scares me as as a, a writer is the fact that we are going into this world and it's getting bigger and bigger every day. It's called the metaverse. And I, I'm so afraid that the metaverse is going to take the imaginations away from the book page. I, yeah, I hope not. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, my, my kids would much rather play video games these days than pick up a book. <clears throat> In fact, I had an avid reader turned into a reluctant reader at some point. Um, due to his obsession with video games. So it's gotten to the point where we are trying, you know, to make time for them to be readers. Mm -hmm. Like you need to at least read for a half hour today. And, and that doesn't mean up in your room where you might be actually playing your video games. Come sit down on the couch and we're all going to read for a half hour. And hopefully that's helping. <clears throat> Well, and the, but, th the thing I would like about things like that is, is that, that when you do read, it creates conversation outside your home because, I mean, you because you want to share the information that you just experienced. Yeah, I, I would hope so. Uh, you know, if you're reading a good book, you absolutely want to share it with other people. And, you know, you get so much more from reading. I don't have to tell you, but, you know, reading is teaching you empathy yes. and it's you how to have conversations and, uh, you know, COVID for one, video games, social media, all of that, I feel like this generation is losing the ability to communicate face to face with each other. And so something that, you know, I'm working on, you know, like I'll tell my son, if you're going to ask someone to go to the dance, you're not going to send them a text, you're going <laughs> to walk up to that person, and you're going to say, will you go to the dance with me? And if you can't do that, then don't ask. <laughs> Let's talk about Lake 7. I mean, wow, a, a publishing company in a world where so many authors and writers are told no. How do you get through that storm? Uh, well, it's, it, it, it's a company that was um, sort of bred from necessity. Uh, the, the backstory to that I think is pretty interesting and pretty unique. Um, I had no plans to be an author. I had no plans wow. to be a publisher. Um, this was 2005, 2005, my wife and I, uh, we were, we were battling infertility. It was a really dark time for us and the infertility treatments almost killed my wife. Mm. And, oh, so we, re we realized right then and there, all right, we can't do this. What's plan B. And for us, plan B was adoption, but the adoption price tag was, you know, it, it was, it was, I believe 16 to $18,000. Mm. We were and paycheck paycheck to paycheck it's like there's no way we can do this and so um we talked it over we made a plan and i had this manuscript that i had written um sort of as a writing exercise never really thought i'd do anything with it it was, it was called santa claus super spy <laughs> Facebook of Florida freeze and i was inspired to read it or i was inspired to write it after reading um the magic tree the first magic tree house book I thought I had never experienced an early reader chapter book before. And I thought I can do this. I mean, I can write a chapter book. So um, I wrote this manuscript, put it in a drawer, forgot about it. Uh, we needed to come up with big money fast. Mm -hmm. And so we talked it over and decided, well, how about if we self publish this and I'll bring it to craft fairs. I'll do some school talks at all the local schools and uh, we'll see if we can make some money fast that way. And so I'm, uh, you know, Back then, self-publishing was not a big deal. It was not there was there was hardly any information about it anywhere. So I went to the library, our local library. I found the one book they had on self-publishing. I checked it out, and I sort of stumbled my way through creating my own publishing company and self-publishing this book. And it was it was just going to be something to do to fundraise for adoption, and it snowballed into where we are today, where we're doing. Probably, uh, you know, 10 to 12 books a year and a real, real emphasis on choose your path books. Wow. Wow. See, and I, that's inspiring because there are so many writers that are listening that I call them hider writers in the way that they write, but they hide. And, and, and you've, you've got to be able to plan. You, you already planted the seed by putting it on paper. Now you've got to let it grow and give it some sunshine. And it's through people like yourself, Ryan, that, that people can grow forward. Yeah. And I, I do a lot of talks about self-publishing now. It is so easy now. 
to to self publish a book. Mm-hmm. It's not easy to sell it once you self publish it, <laughs> but anybody who wants to put a book out there can do it now. You know, back in two thousand five, it was a you know it was a five thousand dollar investment. Yep. Yep. Um, nowadays, you don't have to spend a dime if you don't want to. What um, do you, you know with, with like Amazon KDP it, and those it. types of program? Uh, you know, it's 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 really something. Yeah, and that, and that's the thing about it is that a lot of people they, they'll put the book first of all to even create a book is is a challenge and a chore as it is, and it, there's a lot of discipline involved. And now you've got to market it. It's just like podcasting; you've got to learn how to just keep giving it to the people. Yeah, that's the hard part. Uh, you know, that's the part I still struggle with. Uh, you know, we, we create these books, and, and Lake Seven Creative is not just a self-publishing company anymore. We work with other authors and other illustrators. But uh, marketing it is hard, and really, it, whether you're self-publishing it or whether you're publishing it traditionally, um, most of the marketing really falls on the author. The author needs to be active. The author needs yeah. to, you know, get on social media, get out to author events, get get out to library readings, and just, you know, start in your corner of the world and let everybody in your corner of the world know about this book, and then grow from there. What's your daily discipline as a writer? I mean, because the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, some people like to go for walks and stuff. I do my walk, but I also have to write. Nothing happens unless I write first. What about you? Well, I have a day job. Okay. Um, it, it Actually, I, I do marketing. Uh, coincidentally enough, I do marketing for another publishing company. Wow. I, I'm like a graphic designer and marketer by day. Um, Lake 7 Creative is still a glorified hobby for me. Yep. So basically my writing and my... Um, publishing on the side is every spare moment I can find, you know, during lunch breaks, um, after the kids get to bed, those are the times when I'm working on my books. Are you surrounded by people who understand that your imagination doesn't turn off? Because I I bump into people and they, and and sometimes they look at me and they just go, you're just weird. You're just weird. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I I suppose that, I suppose you kind of have to be a pure fiction author a little bit. Yeah. Um, it, sometimes it's a little bit weird, but um, I, I think most of the people in my circle are pretty used to it now, and they <laughs> shrug their shoulders, and that's just him. Is it is it long form writing first in a ye- bright yellow tablet, or what? What do you do? You go straight to the computer? You know, I used to write in a notebook. Uh, I I I, I uh, sort of make fun of myself about this now, but I used to have these delusions that I'm going to write all my books in a notebook because someday these notebooks are going to sell for (laughs) millions of dollars. So I'm going to have every manuscript in a notebook. And so that used to be my process. Um, (laughs) I have since learned that I don't have time to to do that anymore. Um, It's so much quicker. And, and, you know, typing, it can keep up with my brain much better than writing in a notebook can. So I am strictly on the computer now. That, that is so true because I, I would write it in a notebook. And the thing is, though, is that w- by the time I went back to, to put it into the computer, my whole entire thought process had changed on what, where the story was going to go. So I would change things. Oh, yeah, that happens all the time. I actually found that to be beneficial for writing in a notebook where I would write it down. And by the time I came back to it to type it, I would have better ideas. And so I, I felt like that made it better. You know, that the, the in between time between notebook and typing it, my brain had time to process what I had written. And, and, and I came up I came out with a better product because of that. Wow. Well, with uh, Lake Seven Creative and things like this, uh, is there a website where people can go to discover your writing, your, your 60 plus books, as well as other authors and things like that that you're promoting? The, the best place to go, um, I, th- I think for, for the Choose Your Path books is simply chooseyourpathbooks.com. Nice. Nice. Great starting point. They can get to other books from there, but that's that's a great place to find, uh, you know, Can You Survive the Wonderful Wizard of Oz, <laughs> and classic literatures, uh, the other book works of classic literature that we have um, adapted so far. I love it. Dude, you got to come back to the show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I mean, if Rick Rudin can come into this show nine times, I need you to be on that list as well. Fantastic. Anytime you'd like to have me, I'll be there. Excellent, dude. Every book, man, I expect to hear from you. All right. Thanks so much. You be brilliant today, okay? All right. You too. Have a great day.